Okay, hi guys. Uh, again, we're going through some technical difficulties in case you are tuning in today. Um, today we're doing a, uh, a live video feed on sump pumps. Uh, spring is here, so uh, as a licensed plumbing company, we and as a water treatment company, we're in oh, probably a good 100 homes a day, something like that. And uh, during the springtime, every year for the past, God, we've been around for 40 years, we see unbelievable floods that uh, ruin people's basements, that uh, cause havoc for them, and uh, so much of it can be prevented uh, with a good uh, sump pump system. Uh, first of all, I want to just describe what sump pumps and battery backup systems are all designed to do. The very first of everything is all homes in the Chicagoland area that have a basement, almost all of them, I'd say 99% of them, all have sump pumps or some pit in the basement. It sort of looks like this right here. So the purpose of the sump pit to uh, sort of educate everybody is to uh, gather the water that surrounds the home. If we look at this concrete wall in the back, if we, this was in the basement of someone's home, the water um, around the surrounding the house, it always wants to come inward towards the hole that's in the ground, which is your basement. And as it tries to push up against that uh, wall, all builders usually build a, a small channel of gravel on the outside of that uh, of this uh, basement wall. That gravel allows the water to filter down and then come underneath the home to the sump pit. They do what's called a drain tile. So behind this wall, there's that layer of gravel, and then on the bottom of that, about three or four feet below the concrete, the floor that I'm standing on, is a corrugated tile, which is, means it's got uh, holes in it. And that, that uh, tile surrounds the whole house and it ports all the water that's flowing down to the gravel to that tile and it brings it to the sump pump. That sump pump pit has a pump in it and the goal of that, the whole goal of the drain tile system along with the sump pump is to take that water out and pump it back out of the house. And the purpose of this is so that we don't crack the foundation of the home. The drain tile that's again a lot around the perimeter of the basement of the house is designed to take that water as it's trying to push against the wall, creating a crack on the wall, but is it, the whole idea is to take that out and bring that into the sump pump pit, and then we want to take it up and out of the house. Now when it takes it out, up and out of the house, if you walk on the other side of this concrete wall, you'd see another drain towel, usually, and uh, it takes that water about three feet under the ground and away from the house, and again it's corrugated, so as it's pushing that water away from the house, it's percolated through the earth and gets back down into the ground. So basically, we're trying to bring any of the water that gathers around the home, bring it to the sump pump, and then we're using an electrical pump that pushes that water up and out and tries to get it far away from the home. If you have consistent problems on this, we've seen that a lot of times, especially as homes get older, there's uh, swales that occur that uh, with the ground settling. And so you may need to talk with a uh, you may need to talk with a, uh, a uh, licensed professional to help you, or a landscaper, to sort of help you understand how that swale can maybe be diverted around the house. This is one of our biggest, biggest cases as we see that happening. The second reason why we see a lot of floods in the basement is because people don't clean the gutters. You need to clean the gutters several times throughout the whole year, especially the springtime. Um, in fact, I've got a good buddy, Tom McCarthy, in the spring, he owns uh, Cornerstone Bank in Palatine. He had a tremendous flood in his basement. Uh, something as simple as just cleaning the, the, uh, the uh, gutters uh, would have been able to help him because as the water came off the roof, it flowed onto the side of the house and it came percolating again through this wall or it, come, it came against this wall and it really overflowed the sump pump pit and of course we had a pump that, in, that was in there that had failed and we didn't have a good battery backup system in there for him. So as a result, it flooded his basement. Um, so if you have great uh, gutters that are clean and you make sure that they're ported away from the foundation, that helps keep the water away from the home and you don't, it's not diverting it down along the wall and back down into the sump pump pit. Hi, we have another visitor here. I'm Andy, by the way. And Bert. Bert? Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Bert, we're just doing a live video here on uh, Facebook and YouTube. And uh, what we were just talking about is how on the back side, if this was a basement, there would be, uh, a lot of people don't understand, but the way that these homes are built, there's gravel on the opposite side of this concrete, which is designed to allow water, rather than percolate into the concrete and 
crack it, it's designed to push the water down to what's called a drain tile that surrounds the perimeter of the basin. That drain tile is a corrugated tile and it ports all that water into the sump pump pit. So where I'm gonna go with this now is we're gonna sort of talk about some of these things that you can do. Again, you can take, talk to a landscaper to make sure that you don't have a swale that's pushing water, bringing water from the, as it rains heavily into your side of the house. So a landscaper that could possibly pitch it away from coming to the house. That's one of our big reasons why we see floods in basements. Uh, uh, and the other reason, of course, is clearing out your uh, gutters and making sure that they port away from the side of the house. Because what we don't want to do is we don't, if we can avoid bringing the water down the, into the drain tile, it means it's push, putting extra pressure on this, this pump. And the pump can only do usually 35, 50 gallons a minute, depending on what size horsepower pump you have. In fact, here we have uh, really what we consider is the best pump on the market. It's just made by Zoller. You can find Zoller pumps almost anywhere. Home, they do make a couple different versions. The professional version at plumbing supply stores, we find are way more durable than the cheap ones you can get at Home Depot. But uh, you know, again, it's to your, you, the customer, you vote with your pocketbook. But we just can see that they last a lot better. So you can see your own plumber get a Zoller pump, we love them. Uh, I think you'll find that they're the best. So this primary pump, the way that this is designed is simply put uh, on the back side of this is a float. So as that water from the perimeter of the house comes into the sump pump pit, it's real simple. The float rises, activates the pump, and it pushes it up and out the house. Again, we usually use an inch and a half pipe, which is what you see here. Inch and a half pipe allows for 35 gallons a minute. So that's usually what we're working at right now with this pump. By the way, my example with Tom McCarthy, because he had so much water, so much aggregate water in there, when we did get a pump going, it couldn't keep up with the volume of water coming into the pit. So he elected to get two pumps with two pipes to take the water outside the house in case this ever happens again for him. Uh, and he got a big battery backup system. There's actually one that's above the one that you see here that he wanted to buy. But uh, it's again, uh, a, great, a great thing that you have to do is remember that this pump made by Zoller, you want to consider replacing every about four or five years. You have to remember pumps, it depends on how much water you get in your home. It, a lot of us right now, Barring, our facility is located in Lake Barrington. The reason why we're in Lake Barrington or Lake County, it's the land of lakes. So the aquifers are very high, which means not only do we have a lot of rain that can push against the wall, but our aquifer below our feet is actually a very high or tall aquifer. In fact, in Barrington, uh, like Port Barrington here, if you drill a well, it, there's water literally 15 feet or 10 feet under the earth. So if you think about, you've already come down 10 to 15 feet with your basement, we really see water just below the concrete that we're standing on. So as we get a lot of rainfall, that water comes up touching the basement floor and it goes right into the sump pump pit. Because again, even under the concrete floor, that, that we're standing on is a huge layer of gravel. Again, all designed to allow the water to flow towards this sump pump so we can pump it up and get it out of the, out of the house. In Port Barrington, as I was saying, their aquifers are so high that uh, we literally see them going on even when there's no rain, these sump pumps are kicking on, just because the aquifer is ever moving. The moon's pull to the aquifer actually uh, as it does to tides, it makes water rise and lower. The same exact thing happens with aquifers. They rise and lower. Now, most of us have homes that, are, that, have, uh, that don't have that high of an aquifer, but, but you have to keep in mind that as the rain falls, you've got so much aggregate water coming into your home or coming against your home that that level in your sump pump is going on and off all the time. So this pump that you want to look at is you always want to be able to buy a very durable pump. I can't tell you how many times that we've had clients that bought a new pump, they put it in themselves, uh, or they uh, had us put in something they bought online, and within a year it's not, it's failing. So it's one of the most important things if you have a finished basement, or you have something of value in your basement, like a you know furnace that's not sit on rocks, that you can avoid, or stone, that you, uh, a lot of furnaces are actually built up above the ground, so in case there's a flood, they don't ruin it. But if your furnace is down on the ground, or your water heater is down on the ground, you really want to consider yourself consider getting a very high-end pump just like this so it doesn't go out. Now, in the event that the power goes out, this is something we see in the springtime all the time, we recommend a battery backup system. Again, this is a Zoller system here. It has a 
uh, this is a deep cell marine battery. Uh, depends on how much water is coming into the pit, but they last somewhere between three and eight hours. Again, it depends on rainfall, how much water is coming in. If you had a swale that's pushing extra excess water to your home, uh, those are some concerns that would actually push more water into it, meaning that the pump wouldn't last as long. But uh, in general terms, we love this uh, battery backup system because in the event that this pump fails, uh, either because it's broken, because pumps, uh, they're all mechanical, they can, uh, they can break. By the way, they are made of metal. The impellers are made of metal on this, whereas some of the cheaper ones are made of plastic. Again, that's part of the reason why we really like the Zoller pump uh, is because it's got metal internals. It's made here in America, so it's very, very dependable. But as a backup, they do have this plastic pump. Again, they save it a couple bucks on it. But if this were to, flow, were to fail, this not only rises and sets off an alarm so that you know that, hey, the primary pump's not working or the power's out in your house, and then it's going to use either electricity, if you still have electricity, or it's going to use the backup battery system to be able to provide its uh, DC power and pump uh, almost 35 gallons of water out of the house uh, per minute. Now, this is, uh, this is a case where this is a simple DC pump, so it's a little bit cheaper. Some, some battery backup systems actually have a full-fledged secondary pump like this that's pigeon-toed a little bit higher. As you can see, by the way, this one's low and this one's set a little higher, so that what we can say is the minute that this, if the water rises within this pit a little bit higher, we know that this pump has failed and that's why we're going to set off the alarm with this. Now, it's a, this is a really, really great system in the event that you do have power. Uh, we do have some clients who have been without power in the Barrington area that because trees fall down in big storms, they're out of power for a day, two days. So in the event that you have a generator, we would recommend that you get two pumps. One pump being the primary and a second pump definitely being on your generator so that in the event the power goes out, this secondary primary or heavy duty pump is your backup so that you have two means to be able to pump that water out of your house. Um, as you can see, as the water then goes up through this pit, uh, or through this pipe, we then have a one-way quiet check valve. Uh, this is something that causes a lot of customers' concerns as we've been out servicing them. They're like, I hear this thumping every night, you know what it is. It's always, the, almost always, it's the, bat, the check valve. So there are cheap ones that are a little metal, they're like 10 bucks. They're really, they cause a lot of hammering, a lot of, uh, wake up a lot of people in their homes. So we recommend the quiet check valve. Basically all that means is that it's out of spring. So when this pump goes on, it's flushing 35 gallons of water a minute out of the, pump, out of the sump pump pit. And then it's pushing against this flapper that does that. And then it's got a spring on it to slowly let it back down. So it doesn't, you know, hammer down and make all these noises. And by the way, that vibration is what makes all the noise in a lot of people's homes. It goes boop, boop, and people get nervous or scared in the night. So if you want to get the noises out of the house, consider yourself getting a quiet check valve. I think they're like 40 bucks or something like that. Uh, again, then it goes out. Some people will have a secondary check valve. I mean, it all depends on how you want it. They do fail. So when they all, all uh, valves do fail, if they fail, you'll hear flushing going up and down, up and down. And your sump pump, even when it's not raining heavily outside, you'll hear it kick on and off, on and off, on and off, and you're wondering what the heck's going on. It's a lot of the time that water will flow back down into the pit, filling it up again, and so it has to go on again. So this check valve is worth checking about once every two years. Uh, we have plumbers that come out to a lot of people's homes. So we're, con and our service techs, again, we're in about 100 homes a day. So we have, uh, our technicians have designed or, or taught to offer this as a service to check the pumps, check if you have a battery backup system, to check the battery to make sure it's good. By the way, even marine batteries usually need to be replaced every three years. So uh, we do have a battery tester. We'll check the integrity of that. Our guys will also check these pumps. I can't tell you how many times we're installing new water coming to people's homes and we go to turn it on at the system and it cleans itself and it puts excess water in the sump pump pit and our plumbers are, are taught to sort of pay attention to it. Does the pump turn on? And while they're doing this, they may or may not hear the pump turn on. So they'll go over and all they do is hit this pipe and all of a sudden it kicks on. The reason why is that these valves will stick, especially if you have a lot of iron or clay. All of us in the Chicagoland area, we have a lot of clay in our ground, 
So what pushes against the wall is water with clay, and that gets in that that clay makes a mixture of clay and water in the sump pump pit, which tends to gum up this switch. So you can, some people tell me, well, we want to buy a pressure switch as a result. I can just tell you the pressure switches fail way more than the standard uh, switch that you see here on the Zoller pump. Pressure switches that we've seen on sump pumps, they fail all the time. And again, that's because the clay builds up on the switch itself, or it can build up on this. So our guys are taught to come in, test your sump pump. Basically, it's as simple as unplugging it, plugging it back in, and dumping a lot of water into the sump pump pit to see that if it turns on. Again, we tell clients, you know, around, especially if you live in Lake County or we have a lot of rainfall, it's worth replacing them every five years or so. If you don't know how old it is, um, it's probably time to replace it. So uh, it's, a, it's a good product, a good thing to sort of rotate around to. So if we had a house that had two sump pumps in it, we would want to rotate these every year or every two years. So a lot of our clients will have our service technicians actually rotate them because you, as you can imagine, this primary pump is almost always the one that's going on. So if we can rotate them, we might get a couple more years of life out of them. That's what we do at Tom McCarthy's house. Again, a good friend of mine that owns uh, Cornerstone Bank in Barrington. His flood was a great, great uh, uh, lesson for us and uh, a lesson obviously for him as well. So again, at that house, we have two primary pumps with two separate pumps that take the water outside and into a drain tile away from there. So um, basically that's the sump pump systems. There are some other systems that are on the market. Uh, there is a double battery system that's, uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's a double battery backup system where you have two batteries in it. It gets kind of expensive, around $4,000. But if you're in, some, in, a hot, in an area where your power goes out a lot and you don't want to spend the money on a generator, it's probably worth looking at a double battery backup system where you have two batteries and basically one outlet. And that one outlet is going to go to a secondary pump. And what we do in that particular case is we have two primary pumps and we plug the second pump into this dual marine battery system that's designed to uh, provide much longer power than, than a single battery like we have here. Uh, but in any regard, I don't know if the guys here have any questions that maybe we can a answer while we're here. I mean, I checked my, my primary pump and it uh, was installed on September 16th. Okay. Thoughts? I mean, without seeing anything, is that... Yeah, so it's, uh, 16, I mean, we're only in 19, so that's three years. So the best thing to do on that is actually, like I said, you can actually take your water softener put it into a regeneration. So water softeners will dump about 70 gallons of water into your sump pump pit. So it'll help fill it up with water and you just sit there and unplug it and plug it in. And what you should be able to do is hear it kick on after you get a bunch of water in there. I know we have, we have to use angel water for our water softener and for our chlorination system. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't know whether or not when we have it come out for a maintenance check or something, if they can do that. But yep, we can. It's like for them to do the test on it, it's, you know, 10 bucks or something yeah, like that. Yeah. They, they, sometimes we have to actually open up the pit to yeah. actually take a look at it, make sure everything's clean. Sometimes, especially with new construction, this is actually a great point. Thanks for bringing this up. In new construction homes, the sump pump pit is a garbage can. So I can't tell you, we've had, I can't tell you how many people who have, uh, or new homes have tried to file claims against us saying your water softener flooded my basement. But when we go there to find out what really happened is that the sump pump pit People sweep, you know, the guys as they're uh, getting the house ready, they sweep all the garbage into there. And so what ends up happening is we find uh, like uh, drywall, backing of drywall, all which plugs the impeller of the sump pump pit. It has nothing to do with the water softener, which is designed to put 70 gallons of water down the sump pump pit, which again, the sump pump pit usually have, you know, holds 50 to 75 gallons, depending on which size pump uh, pit that you have. They're usually made of plastic and there's a bottom to it. Um, in some cases, by the way, there will be a vent that comes off of the sump pump pit uh, that is designed to take radon away. As, as a radon expert, just so you know, the sump pump pit allows radon to easily escape your house. We live in a very high radium market. So if you do have, uh, if you use your basement a lot or you have kids living in the basement, please do a radon test. Every two years is what the uh, Department of Public Health recommends. And if you have a radon system that has a special vent that's coming up and out of the house, then we want to take extra care to make sure that that gets sealed. 
if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you're checking your own pump, please make sure that you reseal this because if we go back into homes so many times and someone hires Tom, Dick, or Harry to help them with their sump pump, they replace it, and next thing you know, the whole radon system, which is designed to prevent you from getting lung cancer from radium-222 that, that builds up and gets into your home, they forget to properly seal it. Uh, so as a, as a, just a reminder, make sure you properly seal the sump pump, lit, sump pump after you've serviced it or tested it, okay? So yeah, when our guys come out, we certainly can check. You know, one of the questions here is, could our service techs check this when we're out checking your water system, the softener, or the drinking water system that you have? Uh, our service techs are, are taught to be able to, you know, say, hey, there's a couple key things that we should do while we're in the basement. One is to check your sump pump, make sure it's working efficiently. We bring up how old is it, around, again, around year five, we'll make a little note for you say it's probably time to change it. The other thing we recommend is flush your water heater. It is so important in our market to flush your water heater every year at a minimum. It's actually in the uh, owner's manual. It's a requirement, otherwise you can lose your, um, your uh, warranty on it. So you need to flush that water heater in our market because we all have very high both iron and clay in the water, but iron and calcium in the water. And so you want to make sure that you get that thing flushed every year. That's prevent great preventative maintenance. So I don't know if you guys have any yeah, other questions. And for the discharge pipe that's actually going out and dumping the water into the yard or whatever, is there any requirements for that in terms of distance from the house or distribution? Because I'm, yeah. I'm always concerned because it just seems to get dumped out by some trees. I'm wondering, you know, is that correct or should we yeah. actually prepare an area? No, yeah, you should prepare an area. So it, it, it depends on the house. Like uh, we're, a home that I bought in Cary, they did a great job. They, uh, Town and Country Homes did it. They created swales between the two homes and that swale, all they had is this pump go straight outside. And I looked at it, there's no, it doesn't pour down. And then by the way, when they come out of the house, they should come out of the concrete of the house and then they should pour it down. And then there should be a, tr a little path or a little bit of a air gap between that and the drain tile so that uh, it just basically sprays into this corrugated tile that takes the water away from the home. Now, in event in the, uh, my house in Cary, it just sprayed it out into the yard <laughs> And, but it hit a swale, and the swale took it behind all the homes, and then that took it to a reservoir for excess flow. In your particular house, if you have, uh, you should basically fill that up with water, watch it pump outside, see where it goes, and in heavy rainfall, it's worth putting on an umbrella, take an umbrella, walk outside, and watch that water flow away from your house. If it doesn't flow away from the house, that's when you want to get a landscaper involved to make sure you get either a swale to take the water away from your home, and not towards your neighbor's house, away from your home, and then also, or you can get a drain tile, which is again, this corrugated tile that gets buried, and you wanna take it directly away from the home about 30 feet. And in some cases, especially we have so much clay in this market, that clay means that the water doesn't percolate through the earth quickly. So it sits on top, and it will spread right back to your home. So in some cases, if you have a very heavy clay yard, we would recommend, and we've uh, dug them for some clients, what's called a dry well. And what you do is you dig, at the end of that corrugated tile, you dig a big hole, sort of like this, and you fill it with rock, and that drain tile hits that big pit, and it could be, holds 100, 200 gallons of water. And what that does is help you get that water down below the clay level, so that the water hits that dry bed of gravel, and it takes it straight down. And all you do is you put the grass, you put uh, uh, dirt and grass on top of it, and you don't even know that this huge, layer of gravel underneath the ground, and that's a good way to disperse all the water away from the house. Great. So if you uh, ever need a helping hand on that, you can give us a call, we'll help you take a look at it. But uh, I can also draw you a diagram when we're all said and done. So are your service personnel who come up for maintenance, let's say in the water softener, are they capable of doing a quick check on the adequacy of the sump pump, or you know, for lack of a better, just to check it, make sure it's working well? Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll do basic checking, but when it comes to like the mathematics, do we have enough volume of water, it's a really hard thing to do. That's why when it rains heavily, you want to pay attention to how often this thing's going off and on. So the best preventative ma ma maintenance is two things. One is make sure your, your, uh, your downspouts are ported away from the house. Yeah. Two is when it does rain heavily, you yourself get involved. Go down there and just take, listen to it. See how often it, this thing's kicking on and kicking off. And then go outside to make sure it's properly being discharged away from the house. Again, a sump pump, if it's running constantly, which we have a lot of clients yeah. who, when we get to their home, it's running all the time, 
you really need to have a professional like a landscaper help you understand why is there so much water coming against the concrete of your house. If you've had a case where you have a lot of foundation cracks, there's something going on outside the house. Uh, we have a, a client named Quinn Regan. He's a, a back surgeon in, in uh, Inverness. His whole yard slopes like this, and it pours straight down to the back of his house, and it goes right against the back concrete wall. So in a case like that, we need to somehow divert it away from the home so that it goes around the house rather than coming straight at the back we of the house. We did have that happen. We had to have complete repiping done to the outside because one of the pipes had, had uh, deteriorated, yep. and, and, and the, had the piping had dropped, so the pitch was off, yep. so it was, it was backing up, so we repiped all the way out. Yeah, you have to remember that drain tiles are made of plastic, yeah. and with all the gravel, uh, over time they erode, corrode. You know, they break. Yeah. And I've had cases where the sump pump is filling with gravel, and what's happening is there's actually around the drain tile is a sock. It's act they actually install a sock. So without the sock on it, what happens is all that gravel and the dust from that gravel gets right into the sump pump, comes into the pit. Next thing you know, your pump is breaking all the time. So we have a client. Uh, that had a brand new home in South Barrington where this happened and uh, there's nothing you can do other than try to dig up the outside of the house but it's a very very expensive uh, proposition what he elected to do is to see if that dust from all that gravel will slowly diminish over time and that that is what happened but yeah you you know in cases like that where you have that you it's worth that investment because again you're talking about flooding your basement and yeah. you know an ounce of preventative measure is way 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 better than having a whole basement flood. I mean, li literally, we've been in homes, I was in one home where it was over the, up to my neck in water, and uh, you know that's because that foundation too, the, the back of the yard was sloped like this, put it straight over it. It literally went over the lip of the house, the concrete where the, where the uh, concrete wall meets the foundation of the home. It literally was pouring over the side because so much aggregate water was coming in Again, everybody at home, the reason for this is in the Chicagoland area, we have a high amount of clay under the ground. So even though your house, you think it's all, you know, hey, I have a perfect house and there's dirt under there, it's not. It's very likely it's clay and you have about, your uh, builder will put 12 to 18 inches of dirt uh, on top of that clay. But all that means is that water, which will, you, if you get in a couple inches of rainfall, is going to come and, 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 and flow directly on top of that clay towards your house. So I think that's about it. Uh, again, I'm Andrew with Angel Water. Our goal here is to be you know, like a handy Andy or help teach you guys a little bit about the house. If you, uh, again, we, to summarize it, we want to really take a look at uh, Zoller pumps. If you're out there looking for a new battery backup system, we'd love to help you. Uh, if you're out looking online or something like that, the Zoller system is the Pro Pack is one of the best systems that we've seen. If you do it yourself or you need a hand, you can give us a call at 847-382-7800. Eight, uh, you can also find us online at angelwater.com. And again, we appreciate you guys coming out and uh, visiting us online with uh, YouTube and Facebook. Thanks. So, quick Thanks. question.